Right, what we're going to do is we're going to get our helicopter to lift off, we're going to get it to rotate around 90 degrees, we're going to get it to pause just to see to make sure it stabilises, and then we're going to get it round again another 90 degrees. At this point here, we're going to get it to pause for about a minute or so. This will allow us time to introduce a few external disturbances into our system. Uh, we're going to give it a whack, see how it reacts to it, see if it can recover, uh, before we allow it time to then return back with a large, full 180 degree set point change and then land, hopefully gracefully, back where we took off from. Alright, what we'll do is we're going to compile our controller and we're going to download it to our embedded processor. Alright, it's now compiled, we can start the controller, start our data collection in MATLAB and apply power to the helicopter. Alright, we've achieved lift off, now let's see if we can get our first set point change. You'll note that the angle that it's now sitting at is the maximum angle that it can achieve around that axis. We want to constrain it, plus or minus 30 degrees, of being flat. And once again, constrained, optimal control around this axis. Alright, so we've now got approximately our stable solution. Let's introduce a few external disturbances. No need to be soft with it, constrained, meaning it's not going to go out of control, trying to sort itself out again. Alright, comes back, a bit of overshoot, we did introduce a large disturbance and it has retained the same position again. Let's so say we want to introduce a different disturbance. Same thing again. I can manually bring it round, holding it. Okay, and you can see that the angle at which the helicopter is retaining is the constrained solution. It returns back to the original set point location. Alright, if we wanted to introduce a more significant disturbance, probably stopping the flow of air through this frame. Okay, you can see that it also copes with varying types of disturbances. landing procedure. And ever so gracefully landing just about where we came up from. Alright, so we're now looking at the data that we collected during that run. What we see is we see our two rotational set point changes and of course we're going to see a bit of me uh, introducing some external disturbances into this system. Uh, there's me dropping it, there's me giving it a push around the, the axis. But the interesting one here is when I manually held it about its rotation axis, we see it just nice and flat sitting at its constraint. Slide overshoot, it's allowed to do that, it is a soft constraint, but it remains constant once it's found its optimal constraint solution. I let it go, and it returns back to where it's supposed to be along the rotation axis. We see the maximum execution time achieved by our controller per sample was just over 16 milliseconds, requiring 10 QP iterations to solve in real time. 